this configuration. Okay. Hey everyone, it's Dan from Quest, back with another dance planning episode. Today, we're going to talk about how and where we should install a dehumidifier to get you the best performance for your application. Why is this a question that's coming up? Well, in these years after COVID, when people are really focused on indoor air quality, they're bringing in more ventilation air, more outside air, to give a better environment for people or processes to occur. But with more outside air, there's a higher need for dehumidification because that outside air has a lot of humidity in it. So they're trying to retrofit our dehumidifiers into existing systems, and they need to know what's the best way of doing it. I mean, should I put it before the air handler, after the air handler, around the air handler, or I don't know, maybe just put it on a pedestal in the corner because our dehumidifiers are pretty darn good looking. Before we jump into the four methods of installation, the one thing we need to understand is the effects of incoming air on the performance of a dehumidifier. And I think the best way to do that is to look at <laughs> my favorite, a psychrometric chart. Let's examine the Quest 335, the most efficient dehumidifier in the world. So let's start out with 80 degrees, 60%, the traditional rating condition for dehumidifiers. As the air comes in, the first thing that has to happen is the cooling coil has to cool the air down from 80 degrees to its dew point, 65 degrees approximately, at which point it can finally start pulling out water. So as it continues to cool the air down to about 55 degrees, we can say there's a fair amount of water that's pulled back out. Since it's a dehumidifier, we have to do something with all that energy, so it becomes sensible heat put back into the airstream as it enters the space. We're pulling 15.2 pounds per hour out of the Quest 335. Now let's take it down a notch and say that the air is still 80 degrees, but only 40% relative humidity. There's a lot less moisture in the air, and now the dew point is down in the range of about 52 to 53 degrees. That means our cooling coil has to take a lot more sensible heat, as you can see. So now our performance drops to only 7.4 pounds per hour. What if we really ratchet it down? Now let's take it down to still 40%, but incoming air of six degrees, a condition that would choke most dehumidifiers. But in the case of the Quest 335, it's still be able to pull out 2.4 pounds per hour. Not great, but not bad. As you can see, the performance of the dehumidifier is really dependent upon the incoming air conditions that we're pulling into the dehumidifier. The lower the temperature, the lower the relative humidity, the less capacity we get out of it. And as we look at these different installation methods, you'll see that the incoming air conditions can change vastly from one installation method to the other. So today we're gonna to talk about four different installation methods. The first three are integrated into the HVAC system. They'll be return air to return air, supply air to supply air, return air to supply air, and the fourth one is just installing that dehumidifier independent of the HVAC system. First installation we're gonna do is return air to return air. And to help us out with the visualization, we set up our own little HVAC system, complete with air handler and cooling coil, ductwork feeding it, ductwork leaving, and in this case, a Quest 70. But honestly, this will work with any of our M-Core technology dehumidifiers with the straight pass-through system. In this configuration, the dehumidifier sees the warmest, most humid air possible, so we get the best capacity out of the unit. What's the drawback? There's gotta be a drawback, right? If that cooling coil is operating, all my dehumidifier is doing is stealing the moisture that the cooling coil would have taken out anyway. So we're just swapping latent load for sensible load, and we're not really gaining too much traction, at least if both are operating at the same time. So what installations would I want to do this for? Applications where the dehumidifier and the cooling coil typically don't operate at the same time, such as churches, auditoriums, other large spaces that go from a giant occupancy with a lot of heat load, keeping the cooling coil loaded up, to no occupancy. For example, a church throughout the rest of the week where you just need to keep it dehumidified enough to protect the organ. So whenever the dehumidifier and the cooling coil are not operating simultaneously, return air to return air is the perfect installation. The next installation method we're gonna look at is supplier to supplier. So we're going to start by taking the air out of our space, whether that's a school, an office building, a swimming pool, or a yurt. And we're going to pull it and run it through our cooling coil, cool it off, and pull out the maximum amount of water we can with that cooling coil. Now the air comes out 
probably 65, 60, maybe even 55 degrees, and pretty close to saturation headed back to our space. We're going to tap a little bit of that off, send it through our dehumidifier, and then blend it back in before it goes back to the space. Now the advantage is the dehumidifier hasn't stolen any load from the cooling coil, so we get the maximum dehumidification possible. What's the downside? Of course there's a downside. The air is going to be a lot colder. So depending upon the dehumidification technology we have here, it may have a small or drastic effect on the performance of that dehumidifier. Our third configuration is return air to supply air. Just like the name says, we're pulling air from the return air side, running it through the dehumidifier, and dropping it back in the supply air side. What's the advantage of this? Well, just re like return air to return air, we're pulling the highest dew point air possible to get the most capacity out of our dehumidifier. The other advantage is just like the supplier to supplier, we're running warm humid air through our cooling coil and getting sensible and latent moisture removal here. So we get the most dehumidification possible from an integrated HVAC installation with this setup. What's the drawback? There's always a drawback, right? The drawback is not all the air is going through the cooling coil anymore. So while our dehumidifier might be adding a little bit of heat and taking a lot of moisture out, we're reducing the airflow through this unit and therefore reducing the amount of sensible cooling that we've, we're taking out. Likewise, this dehumidifier has to overcome the pressure drop across this. That can be a problem in high external static pressure situations. But luckily for you, with MCOR technology found in the Quest 225, 335, 506, 746, and 876, we compensate for up to half an inch of external static pressure, giving you full capacity throughout that range. What's the last configuration? Completely independent of the HVAC system. Nothing to do with that system at all. We could hang it from the ceiling by threaded rods. We could install it above a plenum with ductwork, bringing the air to and from the unit. We can install it pretty much anywhere we want, including setting in the corner if we just want to admire this bad boy. But either way, what we get is a dehumidifier that runs when it needs to run, when it wants to run, completely oblivious to whether the HVAC is running or not. We get a dehumidifier that's seeing the highest dew point air coming back to it, giving us the most capacity. And we're seeing a dehumidifier that can run all night long, even when your HVAC system is turned off. So it can pull down the moisture and dry out the building material to prevent mold, mildew, and other effects of high humidity in your space. What's a perfect application for independent installation? Just about any installation you can think of. Whether it's self-storage or manufacturing or indoor garden, where you're just hanging the unit from the corner, or if it's an office building, school, someplace where you can put it up above a plenum space. Or maybe a swimming pool where it's in another room with the air ducted to and back to the swimming pool. In all of those cases, you want the dehumidifier to get to do the most capacity as possible and do so in a way where it's allowed to control the humidity, not be at the whim of the HVAC system. Thanks again for watching another dance playing. We, we hope you learned something, in this case about how and where to install your dehumidifier. But as always, if you have any questions, just give us a call at Quest. We're more than happy to help you out.